Dr. A. Nihole Sema, who is the Vice President of NBCC. And as was mentioned earlier, she is also serving as the principal of Nito Theological College, Zunipoto. A very good morning to all of you. Good afternoon. God is good. And all the time, it is because of the goodness of God and the faithfulness of God we are gathered here today and for which all glory and honor be unto our living God. I stand here, as I stand here this moment, I am truly humbled to be part of the history of God's activity in the life of NBCC ministry. I thank God for the privilege to bring the word on this historic gathering. I bring greetings on behalf of the council to everyone who are seated here in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Celebration is a part of life. People like celebratory occasions and long to express their happiness. Indeed, Christian life is a life of celebration with Jesus Christ in its totality. Our celebration today is a witness to that life, and particularly in the life of NBCC Youth Department Ministry. As we come together in thanksgiving and joy, we remember those who labored and shaped the past, our past, and congratulate the pioneers and founders of NBCC Youth Department. I am personally honored and privileged to have met our pioneers, especially those who are former youth secretary, a very gentleman seated by my side, and along with all former youth secretaries. We praise God for your life and for the services that you have rendered. The sacrificial services rendered towards the growth of NBCC Youth Department are the reason of our celebration today. Any individual or any family, any community, and any society stagnates and remains lifeless if there is no reason to celebrate. Any rational being will have something or the other reason to celebrate. Yet, as we come together here to celebrate, celebration should not just be an emotional satisfaction or festivity, but it should impact our lives and should be a time where we understand our past through retrospection and rationalize our future through harnessing possibilities. As we get it here for the 50th anniversary of the youth department, I find the theme for our celebration, celebrating the past, embracing the future, very apt and very true. When we look into the Bible, the Bible records about the celebration of the 50th year in a very meaningful way. And especially, it was a meaningful celebration for the Israelites. As we look into the Bible, we find that all the Israelites were asked to rejoice and to celebrate on the 50th year. When we say all the Israelites, it includes rich and poor, it includes young and old, it includes men and women, it includes masters and slaves, everyone. The poor who lost the land and went in, into servitude for a number of years were asked to rejoice over their restored land once again. They welcome the 50th year since it wiped away their tears after a long period of poverty and suffering. The year-long celebration demanded the rulers of Israel to analyze their policies, their actions, and also their consequences. 50th year celebration was an imperative for the religious leaders, such as priests, Levites, and the prophets to evaluate 
their standing before the Lord. The business community, too, were challenged to look into their ways of threat, political influences, and just treatment of the poor. Families were expected to look at their agricultural contribution to the society, to the socio-cultural, socio-economic condition, analyze the cause for inequality, and raise the voices for justice. Each one was expected to reflect on their lives, social condition, and to work for the future, progress, and welfare of the nation. The 50th year is considered as a very special year to restore, to rejoice, to reflect, and to restructure the society with God's values for progress, equality, peace, and justice within their family, society, and community at large. 50th year celebration was also an institution provided such an opportunity and demanded radical restructuring. As we look into the ancient Israelite society, the ancient Israelite society stands as a paradigm. And today, it still calls us to look into our own situation as we reach this milestone. For our meditation, as we turn to the text chosen, which has been read out, Psalm 78, verses 1 to 7. Psalm 78, verses 1 to 7. If you read the whole passage, it talks about learning from the past, teaching for the future. It is also known as, as it is also, this psalm is also known as a contemplation psalm, which means something to ponder, something to study very thoroughly, something where we need to really keep our think, give our thoughts, reflect on our lives, and apply into, into our lives as well. This psalm is often classified as a historical psalm as well, because the majority of the psalm is given to a retelling of the history of the nation of Israel, retelling of the history of the nation of Israel to the generations to come. Not just for the sake of records of history, but they were asked to retell the history with a lesson to the coming generation. As we read through the Psalms, we are reminded that each generation has a responsibility each generation through what God has done and what God has said. The purpose of communication to the next generation is that they would learn to trust God and never forgetting his wonderful works. For losing to trust God and forgetting his work would lead the people to disobedience. If the younger generations are well instructed, they would be more likely to be obedient, avoiding many errors of their foreparents, and consequently, perhaps, would be saving generations through that. It is still necessary for us to pass these things on. Our theological commitment should also have this list. Our theology divests itself of the greatness of God. We should speak often about them and tell continually the unfolding story of how God has done wonderful works in and through his people. Israelites were asked to reflect on the past and change the present and work towards the future. They were asked to learn from the past and teach for the future. The eschatological sense is absent without the historical reality. Charles Spurgeon, who is known as the Prince of the Preachers, a very familiar a person whose sermon we always love to listen and whose sermon always teaches us. Charles Spurgeon said, those who forget God's works are sure to fail in their own. Those who forget God's works are sure to fail in their own. 
it is time we celebrate what God has done in our lives. At the same time, we are given the same responsibility to pass on the mighty works of God to the next generation. As we reach this historic milestone, the 50th year of the ministry of NBCC Youth Department, we have to remind ourselves that by celebrating the past, we remember what the Lord has done in and through NBCC Youth Ministry. The ministry of NBCC Youth Department has achieved so much over the years through the growth of the young people in our churches, and we praise God for this. Celebrating the 50th year would be a no meaning without evaluating the past, restructuring the present, and envisioning the future. This is also a time for us to evaluate and re-evaluate ourselves. Looking at the past can give us a sense of appreciation for all what God has done through the years. The past can also serve us as a launching pad for the future, which allows us to go forward with a new determination. Because life is not just a linear representation of passive historical events, but it is a dynamic process that motivates us into action. Theology is doing, and it is not just gut talk in a rhetorical context. It is something that should make visible through our action. And for us today, as we come up with a theme, embracing the future, for us today, it is through passing on to generation to generation, we should make our theology visible. Yesterday is today's past, and today will be tomorrow's past. Our today will determine tomorrow, just as our past made us who we are today. So how do we embrace our future? So that at least we will have a semblance of our future vision today. When the Bible calls for reflection on their past, it included the areas of failure, success, faithfulness of God, keeping the commandments, meaning of worship, customs, and practices. It included both socio-political transformation and theological rejuvenation through the renewal and commitment to the covenant. Uh, our celebration, sorry, <clears throat> our celebration is also a call to such action that should be the central theme of the theology of celebration. People gathered here today as we take up the challenge to work with young people. With, with young people, the concern is, where do we take our young people from here? How is our young people and where is our young people? I, I am so much impressed with the statistics given by our general secretary. Today, young people live in a world with forces that has more detaching power away from God than the world has ever witnessed before. The world offers fresh set of worldviews, concepts, lifestyles, and relationships. It is more or less becoming a religionless religion the virtual universe, which we cannot deny, the virtual universe has offered us a virtual identity, virtual society, virtual culture, and even virtual theology. The real is assimilated into virtual. For example, research has found that young people between the age 16 to 25 comprise the highest rate of dropping out in the church membership, which we have heard uh, detailed statistics from our general secretary. They are into the popular culture, they are into the virtual culture, they are into the individualistic individualism. This sounds very alarming. It sounds quite alarming. 
And especially those people who are gathered here this morning, those who are committed to work with the young people. Isn't it an alarming? What could be the reason? Why is it happening? Why is it so? Where do we find our young people then? Where are they? And where is our future when young people are drifting away from the churches? When our young people are being carried away by the world? When our young people are no longer interested in the Christianity? When our young people are no longer with us? Is it because the church is too rigid? Is it because the church is too traditional, too static, that we fail to meet the need of their needs? We need to revive. We need to bring back the concept of ecclesia, the concept of ekkalio, not referring to the church building, not referring within the people gathered within the four walls. But I think we need to take the church into the street, which our youth secretary has rightly commented. Is our ministry pattern not dynamic? Has the church become a boring place for the young people? This is a crucial area for the church and especially people who are engaged with the young minds. As we celebrate 50th year, half a century, which is matured enough. Let us revisit our ministry. Let us reevaluate our stand. By way of concluding, I want to pause few things for us to ponder as we seek to embrace our future while remembering our past. Firstly, impart sound biblical teaching. Impart sound biblical teachings. Sound biblical teachings relevant to the times. We have to remind ourselves that biblical principles, biblical teachings are being challenged by the technological innovative advancements. The story of God's mighty works are being challenged by the story of mighty scientific inventions. And at this point, we need to impart sound biblical teachings. In addition, church should once again become an exciting place. Church should once again become an exciting place for everyone, for every believers, and especially for the young people. Traditional ministry will no longer meet their needs. Remember, we are competing with the entertainment world. Furthermore, we need to uphold Christian moral and ethical values. We need to remind our young people that Alternate values of postmodernism do not supersede shalom from God. Christian life should be a life of satisfaction and fulfillment in God. Finally, young people are struggling with the identity crisis and culture confusion, cultural confusion. They are introduced, they are into so many cultures. They are having identity crisis cultural confusion, while accepting the reality of all other alternate systems, virtual or popular, our identity and culture has theological mandate because we are created in the image of God, distinct with roots and permanent with destiny. We need to apply Christian principles in every area and in every relationships of life. Murray Braun, the director of Youth Train said, effective youth leaders need just two attributes. If you want to become an effective youth leaders, if you are engaged with the young minds, if you are involved with the young people, you need to have just two attributes, according to what Murray Brown said. He said, you need to love God and love young people. You need to love God and love young people. These are critical guideposts for all of us. Within this framework, we reflect on Soren Kierkegaard, a Danish 
theologian, a poet, and a philosopher who said, life can only be understood backward, but, but it can only be lived forward. The importance is time-bound in a sense that unless we start immediate and sustain it, we are neglecting our future. In as much as we remember our glorious past, let us work towards, let us go forward, let us embrace our future. Because as someone said, future is not tomorrow. Future is not tomorrow. Future is now. The path to embrace the future is now. Let us celebrate the past by retelling the story of God's mighty works and embrace the future by making our action visible today and continue to pass on to the generations to come. God bless us.